as a black man in America, growing up and from pure uh, influence, Democrats are for the black people and Republicans are racist white people. That's what I grew up knowing. My name is Brandon Tatum, and this is my story. I was born in Fort Worth, Texas. Um, I came from a split family, uh, had very good parents. And I would say that most of my childhood, I was, uh, I guess my heroes were athletes. Um, I think I wanted to be like Michael Jordan. That was my favorite uh, sports uh, icon. I, growing up in Texas, you know, you, you, you go to church, you play football, and that's it. You know, so being in Texas, growing up in Fort Worth, I mean, everybody plays sports. And so I was no different, you know. And my son was born in 2010, which was towards the end of my uh, college career. And in 2010 was also the year that I was eligible for the NFL draft. I had an agent, and it was projected that I would get drafted in the sixth or the seventh round, which is the last two rounds of the NFL draft, um, to the Oakland Raiders. So my family threw a birthday party and a draft party same day. My agent told me that the Oakland Raiders had contacted him. They're going to draft me for sure and the uh, sixth or the seventh round to be first safety go. Um, that opportunity came and went. On that draft day, he passed on me. They decided to pick another player and I was devastated. I was devastated. I cried like a baby, and I had to make a crucial decision to say, okay, now that I put the X on the calendar, where do I go from here? So I decided to do a ride along. Um, I, I, I just went to a random substation, and, and that's why I believe that things things are meant to be. And so I pull up to the substation, I pull right up on this officer. I pull right up next to him, and I said, hey, you know, can I do a ride along with you? And Officer Sean Payne, who's a white officer, he, he looked at me, I could tell he was shocked. He was like, you know, what, what is this guy doing? And then I asked him to do a ride along and he said, of course, man, come by next week. We'll get you signed up for a ride along. And I went to do the ride along with Sean Payne, the emergency call of a young man who's acti actively committing suicide. And I literally saw them save this kid's life. He was actively cutting his wrist at a table at the back near the kitchen of this little small uh, studio apartment. And I remember him saving his life. They ended up getting him to, to safety, get him to some help. Um, and we get back in the car. And I remember before we went to the call, Sean was asking me about my family. He was talking about my mom and dad. And then we get back in the car and I remember him resuming the conversation. And I, I, was, I was at a loss of words. I mean, my heart was still beating like this. And I remember him asking me, um, uh, what were you saying about your mom? And I'm like, my mama, I, you know, I have a mama. You know, I was, I was totally, just flustered. I, I asked him the question. I said, man, you, you, did this happen every day? He like, oh yeah, I do this every day. And at that moment is the moment that I first discovered a hero. For the first time I saw a hero. And I used to think that athletes were heroes and nothing against athletes. You know, you know, you work hard. I, I know the sacrifice that's being made, but that's nowhere near what I saw from Sean Payne doing that on a day-to-day -day basis and being able to recompose himself or gain his composure after seeing something so horrific. And at that moment in the car, I said, this is my calling. This is what I want to do. I want to be a hero like Sean Payne. And I became a police officer and I was a police officer for six and a half years. When I was growing up, um, automatically, I was a Democrat. Uh, my whole family was, they were all Democrats. And as a black man in America, growing up and from pure uh, influence, Democrats are for the black people and Republicans are racist white people. That's what I grew up knowing. And, and, it, and it held true even when I was a police officer, when I first got on the police department. But I, I began to be challenged by other police officers. You know, some of them were my friends that loved me, cared about me, and knew me better than just by anybody else. And they would always tell me is that, okay, look at what this side is saying, the Democrat side is saying. Look at what they stand for. And people would tell me, that's not what you stand for, is it? You're a Christian. You know, you believe in this. You believe in this. That's not what they're saying. And I would often say, oh, but I don't agree with that, but I still believe in this side. And over time, it began to wear on me. You know, those seeds were planted in me to, to really look at it more consciously. Barack Obama began to say things that were degrading and damaging to the image of law enforcement in America. Uh, with Michael Brown and, and, and with the police officers that arrested a guy, I think he was a professor at Harvard or something like that, and they arrested him because um, it appeared that he was going, he was breaking into a house. It happened to be his house, but the police officers didn't know that. 
And Barack Obama didn't verify that. But the first thing he said is that those officers were acting stupidly. I physically saw the reaction of the community from the things that he was saying. People would begin to attack us. People would begin to, especially African-American people, were, oh, man, you put me over because I'm black. Man, y'all just out here just doing all whatever. And they were directly hearing from the commander in chief at the time. It broke me from that loyalty to not being open-minded. And I said, you know what? I will never support anybody who will not stand behind men and women who wear the uniform. And that's what caused me to just be more open to saying, let me look at both sides and not just to stay on one side when it comes to politics. I've never made a racist police officer, ever. I've never known anyone that I even thought was a racist, um, even if they didn't project it. Uh, it's very difficult to be a racist police officer, given the fact that you can't monitor who you go and serve with your life. And all of us police officers, whether you black, white, male, female, we all worked as a family. Um, I would die for any one of those police officers, no matter what color they were. And the white police officer in our department would die for me in a minute. And they would defend me harder than anybody else. You know, I'll never forget the scenario where it was a young officer. He was fresh on the police department. I had a couple years on him. We went to a call of a uh, white supremacist, a white nationalist or something, something that he was. And he did not want a black man taking his, to, or black police officer to be at his call. We show up. He said, I, I don't want the black man here. I just want the white officer. And my friend, he's my friend. We, we got close after that. He ripped his behind. I, I mean, I almost had to step in the middle of him. He said, how dare you say that to, the, to, to my fellow police officer? We'll leave. We don't have to, we won't serve you. You a piece of crap for saying that. And I supported that. And me and him became close friends. Never had a racial interaction with, never had a negative racial interaction with any of the police officers I was a part of. And a lot of policing in America has nothing to do with race. It has everything to do with behaviors. Because this is what people fail to realize because they're ignorant and they have an agenda. The advice that I would give the, the younger B. Tatum is that first, build your relationship with God. That's the most important thing that you can do. And secondly would be believe in yourself and dream big. People are going to consistently try to put you in a box, tell you what you should think, tell you where you should go. But you got to understand that you're an individual and that just like you have an individual fingerprint, you are an individual person and you have your own mission in life and you have to follow that mission. Don't believe in this oppression. Don't believe that you, you know, live in the worst country on planet Earth. America is the greatest country that we have ever seen. You have an opportunity to be whatever you want to be in this great country. Have integrity, you work hard and never let anybody stop you and you will be successful. If you want to keep this content free, make sure you make a tax-deductible donation to PragerU.